topic of this video is solving problems on twins paradox twins paradox as we know is one of the very important uh, uh, paradoxes in special relativity so let us do a quick re uh, recap of what is twins paradox before we proceed to solve some problems on this topic twins paradox is a relativistic concept in which among a pair of uh, twins uh, could calculate that the other would have aged less after a relativistic voyage mutually due to time dilation effects. That is, this is a concept in which each among the pair of uh, twins would calculate uh, that the other has uh, aged uh, less. The seemingly paradoxical situation is resolved by applying the fundamental ideas of uh, relativity where the traveling twin gets definitely uh, to age less compared to the twin who stays and since the traveling twins changes between at least two different frames of reference in addition to potential acceleration and deceleration during its journey while the earthbound twin remains in one inertial frame during the entire duration of the journey the traveling twin could not apply time dilation to the situation of the earthbound twin and that is why it is really the traveling twin who ages less by the end of the journey and that is how uh, this paradox is resolved in special relativity <coughs> right now we need uh, mainly three expressions uh, to understand twins paradox and solve problems on this topic the first one is obviously the length contraction expression uh, we have posted already a lecture video on length contraction a derivation uh, complete derivation of length contraction another video and then of course we have posted uh, uh, some problems on length contraction how to solve them the expression is l is equal to l naught square root of 1 minus u squared over c square that is the contracted length l is equal to the actual length times square root of this factor 1 minus u squared over c squared and then we need the expression for time dilation as well <coughs> that is given by del t prime which is the dilated time interval is equal to uh, del t over square root of 1 minus u squared over c squared we have also posted uh, a lecture video on uh, time dilation as well as solving problems on time dilation another video uh, on this channel so please do check out if you haven't already watch those videos right and then uh, another uh, important uh, uh, relation that we would need for solving the problems uh, is the Doppler uh, frequency of signals because usually the twins <coughs> Uh, during their journey send up uh, signals to each other <coughs> and if they send uh, one signal uh, per year to each other then their signals could be Doppler shifted so the frequency of signals uh, changes and uh, the time period between signals also gets affected because of the Doppler effect and the expressions for that is frequency f is equal to uh, the uh, actual frequency f naught times square root of uh, 1 plus or minus u over c over 1 plus u over c now the plus sign is applicable <coughs> when the doppler frequency is greater than the actual frequency and that is happening when the twins approach each other that is during the return segment of the journey during the outgoing uh, uh, the outward uh, segment of the journey we have minus sign in the numerator here now if this expression is inverted we get expression for that time period between two signals right uh, the rate at which the signals would be received what is the duration between the time that is given by t is equal to t naught square root of uh, 1 minus or plus u over c over 1 plus u over c and you can see that this is just an inversion of the frequency expression as it should be now if uh, that is uh, with the idea of these uh, expressions one can solve problems on Doppler effect easily <coughs> so we have posted videos also on uh, Doppler effect in special relativity relativistic Doppler effect 
two videos we have posted on this topic as well in our channel so please do check out those videos as well if we haven't uh, done so already so let's now move on to solving some problems on the very interesting topic of twins paradox <clears throat> the first problem maria is an astronaut who is sent on a journey to a nearby star system that is about four light years away she travels at a constant speed of 0.9 c relative to the earth during the trip how much younger would she be on her return from the trip compared to her twin martha who stayed back on earth <clears throat> so the problem is about two twins one of them leaving on a space trip to a nearby star system uh, whereas the other twin stays back so it's a very simple application of the uh, uh, you know, length contraction to one of the twins because her distance gets affected so the application of length contraction we have to do the first point is uh, four light years is the distance for the star system so the earth bound twin uh, Maria would calculate that uh, the time so let us do the for Maria so here uh, the earthbound twin is called Martha right so we, we will do for Martha first she is the earthbound twin she doesn't go on the journey so it is earthbound for her the time that it would take to complete such a journey time taken for the journey is equal to the distance that has to be traveled during the journey over the velocity with which the journey is undertaken which we assume is constant throughout the journey here so the distance here is four light years so four light years and uh, the speed is 0.9 times uh, the speed of light c now in such problems uh, it is obvious that the factor the light velocity is in the numerator separately and because in light here it is also present and then in the denominator there is a c so those two factors would cancel anyway and therefore you have uh, the time in terms of year directly number of years so you have four uh, over 0.9 years that is a, a time it would take for uh, the traveling twin according to the earth based twin <clears throat> though she doesn't travel she can calculate the time that Maria would take for the journey so Martha would calculate that Maria would take 4.44 um, years for this journey therefore total time taken <coughs> would be twice of this because this is only for the outward journey or the forward journey there is a return journey part as well right so total time taken is twice this number so 2 times 4.44 that would be 8.88 years so according to Martha Maria would take eight point eight eight years for the journey this is according to the twin who stays back on earth <clears throat> now what about martha uh, what about the traveling twin sorry maria right so the traveling twin maria for her the distance is contracted by length contraction so distance is getting contracted the traveling distance is not the same as the actual distance it is getting contracted by length contraction so we have to use the expression for length contraction in Maria's case so uh, the distance in this case let us call that t is equal t naught times square root of 1 minus u squared over c squared and the problem uh, u is given as 
0.9c so uh, we would use that here the actual distance to the star system is uh, 4 light years we multiply that by square root of 1 minus uh, u squared is uh, 0.9c squared so it is 0.81 uh, c squared and c squared would anyway get cancelled so we have uh, 4 times square root of 0.19 and that would be <coughs> 1.74 light years ly that is the distance light years units so that is a distance the actual distance that Maria would be traveling because of length contraction. So for her the total distance is total distance would be 2 times this distance that is 2 times 1.74 light years and that would be 3.48 light years. This is the total distance for Maria who is traveling to it. Now what is the time for her? Total time. Total time is the total distance over the velocity with which she is traveling that is 0.9 c. So that is 3.48 light years over 0.9 c. If that is done that would turn out to be 3.87 years or roughly 3.88 years you can say so 3.87 years here also you have a light factor on the numerator and there is a velocity of light here in the denominator so those two factors would uh, cancel each other so the remaining is in years the unit is in time is in years so we can easily calculate such a uh, calculations because of the involvement of uh, distance in light years so the light factor in the numerator so to say would cancel the light the value of the speed of light in the denominator so though i don't uh, know literally cancel it here uh, which wouldn't be <coughs> uh, truly physical that is what it is actually right so the total time would be 3.87 years here so what is the difference here between these two twins now Maria takes 3.87 years. Martha, who is on the earth, takes 8.88 years. I mean, she calculates that Maria would take 8.88 years for the journey, but the actual journey for <coughs> Maria lasts only for 3.87 years. Therefore, the difference here is roughly 5 years. Right? So, uh, Maria would be Maria would be five years younger compared to Martha. So Maria would be five years younger to Martha. That is the <coughs> solution to this simple problem on twins paradox let's move on to problem number two <coughs> and in problem number two twins Amar and Bharat uh, they decide to test the twins paradox where Amar decides to embark on an epic journey to a star system 20 light years away and Bharat the other one uh, decides to stay back on earth Amar's spaceship travels at a constant 0.8 c during this trip relative to the earth. How much younger would Amar return from the trip? If Amar and Bharat were to decide to send electromagnetic signals to each other at the rate of one signal per year according to their own reckoning of the year because the duration of an year is different for these two twins because the traveling twin uh, would uh, face time dilation. So, the, uh, according to their own uh, reckoning, uh, the duration of year will be different. So, how many signals would each of them send and receive respectively? So, this is typically a very interesting problem in special relativity, right? 
when twins embark on a journey uh, how do they count years or how do they keep telling the other one that they are uh, you no know, hail and healthy right they have to send some kind of signals right so if they send signals to each other uh, do the signals re- arrive on time uh, so no they don't they don't arrive on time right special relativity effects take into you no know, this thing we have to take them into consideration so the special relativity relativistic effects take into uh, effect therefore here we see that uh, the time dilation as well as because of the distance and the time that light uh, signal for example takes to travel all these factors have to be considered in such problems so here the star system is uh, 20 light years away so we have to calculate first uh, for the traveling twin let us say how much is the distance so let us start that for amar who is the traveling twin uh the distance gets constant contracted so d is equal to i am directly applying the formula here since we have done that already in the last problem it is uh 1 minus um the square root of 0.8 c you know 0.8 c squared over c squared that would be 0.64 that would be 20 times the square root of 0.36 that would be 20 times 0.6 and the answer would be that is 12 years 12 light years sorry 12 light years this is distance remember right so we have 20 years here so it's uh, light years 20 light years is the distance here given the problem here so that 20 we have taken here and use this relativistic factor inverse of it gamma factor and we are getting this 12 light years as the distance that amar would have to travel to reach the uh no <clears throat> star system now how much time would it take for him therefore time would be uh the distance 12 light years over the speed uh, at which he travels that is 0.8 c uh, so again here we can easily calculate that would be uh, 15 years the total uh, time would be therefore total time is going to be 2 times 15 years that would be 30 years so the traveling twin amar would age by 30 years but the other twin uh there is uh, bharat who stays right um uh, for bharat for bharat the time would the time amar would take the time amar would take will be different right is equal to the distance is 20 light years to the star system over the speed is 0.8 c right uh, so that would be 25 years one way trip that is only onward journey and therefore total time taken total time for uh, amar according to bharat would be 2 into 25 years that would be 50 years so the two twins obviously would not agree that <coughs> amar would age by the same number of years no while amar would cal- calculate his own age <coughs> on his return to be 20 years less so now amar therefore is 30 years according to his own reckoning so amar would say uh, i mean he would send 30 signals because the question here is how many signals each would send and receive bharat on the other hand would count 50 years according to his own clock on earth so he would send 50 signals <coughs> right so here in the question we can see that how much younger would amar return from the trip that has been answered that is 50 years minus 30 years is 20 years so for the answer for this is we have done that is 20 years 
Now, if Amar and Bharat decide to send signals to each other at the rate of one signal per year, according to their own reckoning of a year during the journey, how many signals would each of them send and receive respectively? So here we have done the send part. Right. So the first part is 20 years, 50 minus 30. The second part is that they would send. Amar would send 30, Bharat would send 30 signals. Now the receiving part is somewhat interesting, right? It isn't, uh, it isn't as straightforward because the receiving part is if Amar sends 30 signals, Bharat should receive 30 to understand that Amar has aged only by 30 years. Similarly, if Bharat sends 50 signals, Amar would have to receive those 50 signals to realize that on earth his twin has aged by 50 years rather than 30 years. So eventually Amar would realize that he is not getting older faster than Bharat, right? He is getting younger. Therefore, uh, this has to be realized by both the twins. So uh, here Doppler effect comes into picture, right? So Doppler effect uh, causes the signals to be affected. So Doppler effect eventually is responsible for the uh, signal duration to be altered, right? So Doppler effect causes signal duration. By signal duration, we mean uh, the period between two signals, right? It gets longer and longer while going. That is when, when Amar is uh, uh, going on an outward journey towards that star system. And on his return, the duration between the signals uh, gets you know, shorter and shorter. So causes the duration to be generally altered. We generalize it to be altered initially, right? Now they are getting separated according to our Doppler effect equations. So the frequency, let us call that F. What is this frequency here? The number of signals that uh, each twin sends to the other. According to Doppler effect is the number of signals that they originally send times one uh, minus u over c over one plus u over c. Here in the numerator, we have a minus sign. Why do we have a minus sign? This whole factor will then be um, less than one. And then the frequency is multiplying that original frequency. Therefore, F would be <coughs> less than F naught. And this would happen on an outward trip. Therefore, time period would be reverse of it, right? So. Or we'll calculate that here, right? Next. Yeah. So how many that is then? If they send one signal at the rate of one signal per uh, year, so F is equal to one times square root of one minus, here the uh, speed of uh, uh, no, the journey is 0.8 C. So one minus 0.8 C by C, that is 0.8 over one plus uh, 0.8 so that would be square root of 0.2 over 1.8 that would be square root of 1 over 9 that is 1 over 3 so this means the frequency is 1 over 3 implies that one third of a signal would be sent every year which is not physically possible therefore it is uh, if you multiply that by 3 it is one signal every three years that is the frequency every three years which we, with which each twin would send signal during the outward journey. Now what about the uh, return journey? During the return journey, what is the rate at which the signals are sent? This is the rate, right? Rate of signals. Now what is the rate here? Here the formula is just reversed here. So this is F is equal to F naught times square root of 1 um, plus it would be U over C 1 minus U over C. Uh, in this case this factor in the square root is going to be greater than 1. So F naught is going to be greater than F. So F is less than F naught I can write right. Uh, now f is greater than f naught because now we approach right so f is greater than f naught because this is greater than one means f is going to be greater than f naught 
so this is approach that is the return journey right here therefore if we calculate uh, <coughs> f is equal to again f naught is 1 square root of uh, 1 plus 0.8 over uh, 1 minus 0.8 that would be 1.8 over 0.2 that would be square root of 9 that would be 3 so it is just the reverse of that right so it is now three signals every year on the return journey so though they originally send one signal per year according to their own reckoning because of Doppler effect uh, the frequency of signal changes to one signal every three years on the outward trip because the time for the signal gets uh, longer and longer and on the return journey other uh, on the other hand uh, they get uh, more and more frequently signals so that is three signals every year they get so therefore we can see clearly that the reception also should be based on that right so we can calculate that as well so let me kind of try to write it here so this all this means is um, what all this mean uh, could mean is for Amar who is traveling during his outward trip uh, it takes 15 years for him for the outward trip, right and he sends uh, three signals uh, uh, every uh, three years one signal so total number of signals is 15 over 3 that would be five signals so Amar uh, uh, sorry, Amar would receive rather, right? Amar would receive uh, during the 15 years of his journey uh, uh, one signal every three years, so five signals he would receive. Then uh, during the return journey, because the return journey also lasts for 15 years for him, during that time he would receive 15 into 3 signals, because here it is 3, right? So 3 signals every year. So 15 into 3, that is 45 signals. So totally 50 signals during the trip he would receive from Bharat. So Amar would agree that Bharat has aged by 50 years. On the other hand, the earth-bound twin Bharat, uh, he would uh, receive during the first 25 years because for him Amar's trip would take 25 years according to his own uh, clock. So he would understand that for the first 25 years, he would receive the signals at this rate, one signal every year. And not only that, once Amar reaches the star system, uh, any signal that he sends from there will take 20 light because they, uh, any light signal that he sends from there would take 20 years because the distance to the star system is 20 years. So for Bharat or for the outward trip, it is... Uh, 25 years for the journey plus extra 20 years for the signals to arrive at him. So that would be total of 45 years. So he would receive uh, for the first 45 years the signals at this rate, outward rate. That is one signal per year, uh, well, one signal every three years. That would be 15 signals. On the return trip, on the other hand, remaining is only now 50 years because total is 50 years. So remaining is only, sorry, 5 years, right? 50 minus 45 is 5 years. So for the remaining 5 years of his uh, life on earth, Bharat would, uh, you know, uh, get signals at this rate now. So that is 3, 5 into 3, that would be another 15 signals. So that would be 15 signals. Total he would receive only 30 signals from Amar. And therefore, even Bharat would agree that Hamara is aged by only 30 years, whereas he himself has aged by 50 years. So the twins would agree on uh, uh, each other's age. Right? So that is the solution for this problem. We have answered all the uh, parts of that question, right? So we have answered the first question that is 50 minus uh, years minus 30 years. That is the uh, young, uh, duration by which Hamara would be younger, that is 20 years. Then we have seen that they would each send a, <coughs> a signals at the same rate 
therefore amar would uh, because he is only aging by 30 years would send 30 signals bharat would send 50 signals and they would receive also as many signals so that they agree upon each other's age correctly right third problem is uh, twins jack and jill are fascinated by the beetle girl's uh, star system jack decides to visit the system using his spaceship that can travel at constant 0.45 c uh, during uh, the whole trip exactly after a year jill decides to start her own voyage to betelgeuse system on another spaceship she wants to catch up with jack and so she decides to speed at 0.95 c now the two parts of the question are how long it would take before jill meets jack and part b is how much do they age who is younger a very interesting question in twins paradox this one is in fact, it is one of my personal favorites because um, in the previous question, it is about the signals and how many they would uh, receive or uh, send and uh, do they agree upon their age, all that. But here it is interesting. The first twin Jack here in this case, he travels to the Betelgeuse system, which is uh, uh, at some distance. We don't have to know right now, bother about that distance actually in this case. But uh, since Jack is on a journey to the system, from Earth, he starts and uh, uh, goes on the journey at only about the point four five C. Now, about a year later, uh, Jack's uh, twin sister, Jill. She lives at more than double the speed at which Jack lives at 0.95 C to the same star system from Earth. And she wants to catch up with Jack. So exactly after a year, Jill starts the journey at the speed. Now, how long it would take before Jill meets Jack on the way? Because the first one is going and the second one wants to go and catch up somewhere on the journey because uh, she starts later and she has to go faster to catch up, right? So now how long it would take before Jill meets Jack and how much do they age who is younger? So to solve this uh, problem, uh, some logical thinking if we put in initially without blindly kind of trying to uh, no, work out some formula for that without trying to work out any formula for this problem if we try to just use some kind of logic it is probably easier to solve this right so Jack and Jill let me put it out like this uh, the speeds are 0.45 C and 0.95 C now the first year of the journey Jack goes uh, at uh, what speed? 0.45 C, no? So he would go 0.45 light years distance during the first year. Whereas Jill is on Earth, so she doesn't cover any distance. During the second year of the journey, Jack would complete another 0.5, so totally he would have completed 0.9 zero light years whereas Jill who started after one year she is going at 0.95 C so during the second year she would complete 0.95 light years distance directly so since uh, Jack has by then would have Jack by then would have covered only in 0.90 light years whereas Jill uh, would be 0.95 the duration that we want to calculate in the first part here would be between one and two years right somewhere along the one and two year mark uh, Jill would cross Jack along the way she would say hi from her spaceship probably and she would go past Jack they don't want to stop right probably maybe they may take a break as well but where do they stop then in that case so probably Jill would say hi or stop or do something wave at her Jack and then go past him at the same speed or maybe she would also decide to slow down then 
accompany his brother, her brother uh, you know, on the journey. So Jill could decide that. So how much distance, extra distance, uh, therefore uh, Jill is covering? She is overtaking Jack, and she is covering about zero point zero five light years. Okay, uh, of the total journey, what is the percentage of that? Point uh, nine five uh, light year distance so far on the journey. So that is point nine five. That means uh, this says me it tells me that it is about one over nineteenth of a light year. Remember, you could use some other method, equations, and all that uh, complicate the problem to solve it. But I don't want to do that, so I'm just trying to approach the problem, uh, you know, logically to solve it. And this is what I feel uh, is probably easier compared to uh, working out some equations and trying to solve it. It is not easy in that way. So it is one over nineteen uh, of a light year. One over nineteenth of a light year is what uh, extra this thing. That means. Uh, remaining time for the year is second year is in one year minus one over ninety, uh, right? So after one year, Jill starts her journey. And uh, she takes uh, two not two years, less than two years. How much less? One minus. One over nineteenth of a year less than two years, so that is going to be equal to eighteen over nineteenth of a year. That is what Jill would take to catch up with Jack. So they meet up along the journey route. That means totally. First year Jill is at home, so first year plus another eighteen over nineteenth of an year she needs, so it is thirty-seven over nineteen year. So it is not two years; it is less than two years, obviously, right? Because by two years Jill would have reached point nine five light years distance, whereas uh, Jack would have reached only point nine zero light years. So, because of course uh, their speeds are different, and therefore their gammas have to be different, right? So what would be uh, gamma for uh, uh, Jack? Let us say the traveling speed first. Let us call that as gamma one, which is of course gamma of Jack, the relativistic factor, because he travels at the point uh, four five. This thing uh, that is one over square root of one minus point four five c over oh square. U squared over c squared, right? So if you work out, we get only one point one two as the relativistic factor for Jack. Whereas let us say gamma two for uh, Jill, that would be square root of one over one minus point nine five c so whole squared over c squared. That if you work out, we would get three point two zero three. So the rates, uh, the speeds are different, and therefore the gammas are different here. So for the first case, time for Jack. Let us try to work that out. Time for Jack for the journey would be obviously Jack suffers uh, time dilation during his uh, journey, so. Uh, the actual time is uh, dilated to him by the relativistic factor gamma as gamma one t. Now, uh, his gamma factor we calculated to be one point one two times. The time for him is thirty seven over nineteen. That is Earth clock time. So that would be two point one eight years. So for an Earth-based clock, the time would be 2.18 years for Jack. Whereas for Jill, it is gamma 2 times t, which is 3.203. We calculated gamma factor for Jill to be over the same uh, this thing. But here there is a trick here. For Jill, it is not just at this time. 
because Jill has waited one year on earth, an additional one year has to be added to her account and that would be uh, gamma 2 times t plus 1 this one year is not dilated right so that would be here also not the whole duration right for uh, jill the whole duration is split up into one year and t1 so that t1 is different for her so let me call the t1 here please note that because that extra time itself is total time for Jack, but for Jill it is only T1. How much is the T1 for the Jill? T1 alone is uh, 18 over 19, that is extra time. So therefore, uh, because we did the 1 minus the previous, uh, please remember, we did the 1 minus this thing, right? that is 18 over 19. So in this case, uh, it is, uh, 3.203 times 18 over 19 plus 1 that would be 4.034 years the difference therefore between the two times is t of jill is greater than t of jack so t of jill min minus t of jack would be about 1.8 5 years. Now the question is who is younger therefore? T of Jill is greater uh, compared to T of Jack. That means who is gaining age here? Jill is gaining age. So Jill would be younger. So Jill is 1.85 years younger compared to Her twin brother Jack. So the answer to the question is Jill would be younger because she's traveling faster. Her gamma factor is more than twice as the gamma factor of Jack. So she has got to be younger. Right. So that is the conclusion we can give to this beautiful problem. <coughs> so that completes our uh, third problem. On this thing the fourth problem is two cities a and b are separated by a distance of 4500 kilometers kumar decides to travel from city a to city b on a business trip he takes a flight uh, at 10 a.m local time on thursday according to clock kept at the airport in city A and the flight travels at a speed of 500 km per hour during the journey. Imagine that the speed of light is only about 1500 km per hour in Kumar's universe. Here remember in this problem the speed of light is given as only 1500 km per hour. That is the first thing we have to note down. If that is the case, relativistic effects would be more or less conspicuous relativistic effects would be more conspicuous please remember this in fact this is one of the questions that we asked in one of our problem videos on special relativity in the beginning right we try to solve some problems on uh, einstein's postulates there is a video on this channel please uh, go and uh, check out that video as well in that video we have even discussed that as why the relativistic effects would be more conspicuous if the speed of light were not 3 to 10 power 8 meters per second but less so that the speed of light would be less then the relativistic effects would be more conspicuous and therefore uh, that is important to note down here of course the distance uh, between those two cities a and b is uh, 4500 kilometers and Kumar takes a flight which can travel at uh, the flight can travel at let's say 500 what is given here 500 kilometer an hour so that is 500 kilometers per hour speed 
so we can say that the speed of light since is given as uh, 1500 here we say that is c prime here in this case 1500 kilometer per hour that is speed of light now we can go on to solve the problem by first calculating u over c for this journey u over c which is of course in relativity commonly called as beta that is 500 over 1500 that is uh, 1 over 3 so that's our beta right therefore here we can calculate gamma factor as well which is the Lorentz factor or the relativistic factor gamma that is 1 over square root of 1 minus uh, u over c whole square which is uh, 1 over 3 so 1 over 3 whole square that is 1 over 9 so 1 minus 1 over 9 is uh, 8 over 9 uh, reverse of that is square root of 9 over 8 and that would be 1.061 that is the gamma for this problem now ground based clocks in this question please note on that 10 a.m. local time he starts the flight on Thursday according to a clock kept at the airport in city A and travels to city B from there there are now three parts in this question if a clock at the airport in city B is synchronized with the clock at this airport in city A which reads, reads 10 a.m. What time would Kumar note on his arrival at the clock in the city B? So let's tackle one part by one part. Uh, what time he would, he would calculate at the clock in city B? That is just the journey time for him according to earth based clocks, right? So time taken for the journey according to the earth based clocks or ground clocks according to ground i say that whether it is city a or city b we don't care it is ground based clock so it is not going to have any relativistic uh, dilation so it is distance over the velocity with which he is traveling the distance between the two cities is 4500 kilometers the velocity is 500 kilometers per hour so it is going to take nine hours for the journey so at 10 a.m. he starts plus 9 hours you add it is going to be 7 p.m. evening right so 7 p.m. in city B so according to a clock in city B which is synchronized with uh, with the clock in city A the time would have read 10 a.m. Uh, when he started the journey that clock as well by the time he reaches it is 7 p.m. These are the ground based clocks. Now let's go to the question again and check what is the next part. What time would the wrist uh, uh, no wrist watch that Kumar wore during the trip show? It is getting uh, dilated, right? A wrist watch is traveling with him. Whatever watch he is wearing, that is traveling with him on the journey. And it has to slow down. All traveling clocks would slow down when, it, when in relative motion to earth based clocks. So that we have to calculate. So there is also a length contraction on this journey, right? Because not just clocks slowing down, there is mainly length contraction for him, right? So if you calculate that, you are taking into account the, the dilation effects as well in one stroke. So it is going to be length contraction of the distance that he has to travel. So the distance is 4000, uh, this thing. So distance seen by Kumar let me write that like that because it is a contracted distance that would be the actual distance times 1 minus a u over c whole square that would be 4500 kilometers times uh, this factor is what 8 by 9 right here we have calculated already so square root of 8 over 9 or directly we can even multiply by comma uh, in, uh, divide by that by comma so whichever way we do it is going to be um, 
4500 uh, by 1.061 that would be 4241.5 kilometers so this is the distance that he has to actually travel for the journey therefore the time taken by him would accordingly be different therefore so the time taken by Kumar according to his wristwatch would be the distance that he traveled over the velocity with which he is traveling the distance is we have calculated that to be 424 uh, 1.5 over the time velocity is obviously 500 anyway so that would take slightly less than the nine hours that the ground plate uh, ground based clock would show uh, so if you do that it would be about 8.5 hours so according to his own wristwatch It is only 8.5 hours, not 9 hours. That means his wristwatch should show, if it had originally shown 10 a.m., because it has to be synchronized with the ground-based ground uh, clocks initially, that would be another 8.5 hours. Uh, that would be 6.5 hours or 6.30 p.m. in the evening. So his watch would only show 6.30, whereas the uh, clock at the uh, you know, airport in city B would show 7 p.m. So he has understood that he gains half an hour by traveling on this journey he gains half an hour in this case. Now the next day he is starting his journey that is the third part here. Kumar starts his return journey Friday. He starts on Thursday here, here his return journey starts on Friday at 10 a.m. again according to the synchronized clock at CTP. The clock in CTP does not change uh, because it is synchronized with uh, the clock at CTP, yeah, though the times, local times may be different. There is a synchronized clock at the airport in CTP as well, uh, which is synchronized with obviously uh, the clock at CTP yeah, and therefore that reads 10 a.m. So he starts now uh, at what time he would reach city A. Yeah? according to the clock there and uh, what would uh, his wristwatch show that is a question in part c here so if it shows 10 am in city b next morning clock 10 am since he reached a half an hour earlier the previous day his watch would show only 9:30 am when he starts his journey now again the journey would take 9 years, uh, 9 hours rather sorry, uh, 9 hours according to this clock. So uh, he would reach at again 7 pm only, the return journey as well. Whereas the wristwatch was already at 9.30, now he would take additional 6 and a half hours, just like the onward journey because he is travelling at the same speed, uh, that would be 4, what is it, 4? is 4 yeah that would again take 6 no not 6 and a half hours what we calculate 8 and a half hours sorry here 6 30 pm is the time but the duration is 8 and a half hours so we have to add 8 and a half hours so if he adds a uh, 8 and a half hours he would reach by exactly 6 pm because it is 9 30 am put half an hour here 10 so plus 8 is 6 pm so he totally gains one hour for this journey for the during the onward trip he gains half an hour and during the return journey he get gains another half an hour so on his return his wristwatch would uh, read 6 pm whereas the clock in the airport at the airport would read 7 pm so that is the conclusion for this problem right next we move on to uh, this problem uh, Kate embarks on an interstellar uh, journey to a star system that is 12 light years uh, away at a speed of 0.6 c on her 25th birthday right her twin 
uh, Leo stays back on Earth. There are again three parts, four parts in this question. How much does Kate A and Leo age? How much each of them would age? And uh, if Kate sends one signal uh, every year on her birthday to Leo, at what rates does he receive the signals? It is similar to the one of the previous problems uh, we have solved with respect to another uh, pair of twins. Uh, the C part is, in return, Leo sends one signal every year as an acknowledgement of Kate's signal. How many does she receive in total? Do they agree upon each other's age? So this is somewhat similar to the problem that we have already solved. So the idea here is to get the more practice uh, with solving such problems. So uh, I would advise uh, to pause the video and attempt this, that is the uh, suggestion that I can give here, right? Before I solve this one, right? So here it is, Kate and uh, Leo are the twins here, and uh, yeah. So that would how many signals uh, they would send at all, right? This is asking. So let's try to tackle now. Hopefully, you passed and uh, attempted that problem on your own. The star is uh, 12 light years away, right? And uh, she travels, Kate travels uh, at a speed of 0.6 C. Now for Kate, the distance has to shrink because of length contraction. So that is by a factor 12 times square root of 1 minus uh, u squared over c squared 0 0.36. I'm directly writing here. This is the distance t, let us call that. That would be equal to uh, 0 0.64, 0 0.8. So 12 into 0 0.8 would be 9.6 light years. This is the distance, actual distance that Kate has to travel because of length contraction along her way. Now the time for Kate therefore would be 9.6 light years over 0.6 times speed of light c that would be 16 years so the star is 12 light years away she travels at only 0.6 c so she takes about 16 years for the journey according to her own uh, clock but for her twin leo on earth He would calculate uh, that that the star is 20 light years away. So 20 light years is the distance, and the velocity is 0.6 c. So according to him, it would be 20 years for the onward journey. So here is 16 into 2 is 32 is the total time for the including the return journey, according to Kate, and according to Leo, it would be 20 into 2 that would be 40 years therefore the difference here in this case uh, between their clocks would be 8 years right so how much does Kate and Leo age so for that Kate embarks on this journey on her 25th birthday 25th birthday since she adds 32 years to her journey according to her she is only 57 years but uh, for Leo Leo would age uh, because uh, it is his 25th birthday as well but he counts 40 years so he would be 65 years by the time Kate returns. So who has aged less? Obviously the traveling twin that is Kate. How many years she has gained? She has gained 8 years. So Kate has gained, so to say, 8 years because of this travel. So she is younger. 
8 is younger by 8 years. Now the rates of sickness we have to calculate. Because Kate has counted 32 years, she would send 32 signals. Kate sends 32 signals. Of course, all these 32 signals Leo would receive. So Leo receives 32. And then Leo sends 40 signals which Kate would receive. Kate receives 40. Now the question is, uh, should we, how, how should we try to prove this, right? We have done it in the previous problem, so it's not a big deal. Uh, the expression for that frequency of signals is f is equal to f naught square root of 1 uh, minus u over c for the outward trip over uh, 1 plus u over c outward and then for the return f is equal to f naught square root of 1 plus u over c by 1 minus u over c right so this we have to calculate therefore in the first case the rate rate at which signals are sent for the outward journey for both the rates are same so outward journey f is equal to square root of 1 minus u over c u is 0 0.6 so it is 1 minus 0 0.6 on the numerator denominator 1 plus 0 0.6 so that is 0 0.4 over 1.6 that is 1 over 4 square root that is 1 by 2 that means uh, 1 by 2 signals every year or 2 signals is it yeah and now it is one half signal right so it is one signal rather rather so it's one signal every two years because here half signal every year that is a rate so here one signal every two years that is for the outward trip and for the inward journey or the return i i call it return right return journey it is the reverse of this so it is going to be uh, two signals every year just like the previous problem so please check that out not the previous means not the previous one uh, the second problem in this uh, video two signals every year check that out it is the same one here as well calculations are similar so to Kate therefore the traveling twin is Kate here so to Kate <coughs> Her journey, uh, her forward journey or uh, outward journey takes 16 years. During the 16 years, she receives one signal every two years. <coughs> that means uh, she has to receive eight signals. During the return of 16 years for her, she receives two signals uh, every year. So that is 32 signals. So Kate agrees that uh, Leo has aged by 40 years because she receives 40 signals whereas to Leo Kate's forward journey takes 20 years plus he continues to receive signals at the same original rate of one signal every two years for another 12 years because the distance to the star is 12 light years. So for about 32 years therefore he receives signals at one signal every two years that means he receives 16 signals for the outward trip like this at that rate. For the return remaining time is already 32 is done only 8 years are remaining for him. So 8 for 8 years he receives 2 signals every year so 8 into 2 here directly that would be 16 another 16 years so a total of another 32 signals he receives whereas Kate receives 40 so Leo realizes that Kate has aged only by 32 years whereas he himself uh, would have aged by 40 years therefore again he, they both agree on their uh, each other's age based on the number of signals sent and received by 
each other right so that completes that problem next problem is a satellite takes 120 minutes for each revolution around earth at an altitude of 800 km above earth's surface how much would the time difference between a clock on board the satellite and one on earth after one year this is part a of the question after one year of uh, travel the satellite around earth on its orbit what would be the time difference for a clock on board the satellite compared to a clock on earth the second part of the question is how many earth years it would take before the clock on board the satellite and the clock on earth differ by one second so there are two parts to this question first we have to calculate the speed of the calculator uh, the, the what is this speed of the satellite because that is not directly given here uh, the time period for the satellite to go around earth the satellite let's say is going around earth a circular orbit the time period is given as 120 minutes so we need speed or the orbital velocity of the satellite and the altitude of the satellite is 800 kilometers 800 kilometers that is given here so we can calculate the <coughs> orbital velocity u we know that uh, the angular velocity omega let us say is for the satellite and the distance here is r between uh, the surface of the uh, of the satellite to, to the center of the earth let us call that r, r. then in that case we can write an equation uh, the speed is equal to which is like the linear velocity in this case in circular motion r omega u is equal to r omega and omega is uh, related to the time period that is 120 minutes given here so it is 2 pi over t therefore this uh, orbital velocity u is r times uh, 2 pi over t r is the 800 kilometer plus the radius of the earth which we take to be about 600 uh, 6400 kilometers so let's say earth's radius Six thousand four hundred kilometers, roughly. That's an approximation. And then small r uh, is total of that, right? So let us call that as uh, total. So small r is nothing but Earth's radius r e plus the distance at which satellite flies t small d. Let's call that. Then we have a situation where we can calculate. Uh, the orbital velocity u applying all these things that is 2 pi times the total uh, distance 6400 kilometers plus 800 times everything is in kilometers so i am converting that to meter by multiplying a factor of 10 power 3 there on the numerator and denominator is 120 minutes so i want to convert that into seconds so 120 uh, multiplied by 60 seconds so that i get my velocity in meters per second so if I do the math, I get 6.28 into 10 power 3 meters per second. That is the speed of the satellite around Earth on its orbit. Now, I have to calculate U over C, the beta factor. So U over C which is called beta in relativity is uh, 6.28 into 10 power 3 over 3 into 10 power 8 which is the speed of flight that would be around 2.095 into 10 power minus 5 okay so the clock on the on board the satellite would uh, undergo time dilation so del t prime for that clock is a time interval del t on earth over square root of 1 minus u squared over c squared 
And then here in this case, if we try to expand this expression binomially, because here this u over c is a very small factor. So compared to 1, it is very small. Therefore, we have to use binomial expansion of this thing. So left side I retain as del t prime. Right side I write the expression again, rewrite the expression as del t times 1 minus u squared over c squared power minus half so that I can use my binomial expansion. That is 1 minus x power uh, n is equal to 1 minus n x so on. You see, if it is minus n here, you would get a plus here, right? Here it is the case. So we have to uh, deal with that. And therefore, that would be del t times for the first two terms, it would be just 1 plus u squared over 2c squared. Uh, higher terms are still smaller, so we can ignore those terms so this is the thing so del t prime is equal to del t if i take del t into the bracket by multiplying the factors inside so del t times u squared over 2c squared now if you take del t on the other side del t prime minus del t is the difference and that would be del t into u squared over 2c squared now the question uh, here is how much should, would be the time difference between the clock on board and the satellite uh, and the one on earth after one year after one year so here we have to take one year as the time first let's take one second here this one if del t is one second here then here the difference would be how much del t prime minus del t would be therefore equal to u squared over c squared is we have got this number here already we have to divide that by half so that would be uh, if you do that that would be about uh, um, if you do the calculations exactly it would be about 0 0.2 nanoseconds right that is what i'm getting 0.2 nanoseconds if it is 0.2 nanoseconds for each second on earth the clock on board slows down by 0.2 nanoseconds for one year which is asked in the question it is uh, 365 days in a year uh, multiplied by 24 hours per day multiplied by 60 minutes per hour multiplied by 60 seconds per minute multiplied by the time that we got uh, that is getting delayed in that clock that is 0.2 nanoseconds so if you do the math here we get uh, del t prime minus del t for a year would be 6.3 milliseconds or 6.3 into 10 power minus 3 seconds this is the answer i would be getting if I do these numbers for a year, I have taken 365 years as the number of days in that year. So the time for the difference, uh, first part of the question is asked here, how much would be the time difference for one year? After one year, uh, uh, after one year of the satellite, the clock on, uh, on board the satellite would run slower by 6.3 milliseconds compared to a clock on Earth. Now the second part of the question is how many earth years it would take before the clock on board the satellite and the clock on earth differ by one second that is just simple right um, that is one over this number so one over 6.3 milliseconds would give me answer to the b part because uh, if one uh, year it is 6.3 how many years it would take so if i do the math it would be about a 75 roughly 158.75 years or 158 years and about uh, nine months for the satellite on board to slow by one second so the time dilation effects uh, for satellites you can see that takes such a long time 
real uh, effects of sand time dilation to observe for such satellites for our, uh, even uh, the International Space Station for that matter, the time would run slower but uh, that wouldn't be very perceptible for a long time. So if you wait for about 158.75 years for this particular satellite, uh, an astronaut let's say he's trying to measure the time on the satellite, of course he can't travel with the satellite but if there is a space a station or spaceship uh, an international space station sorry so to say uh, then uh, the astronauts if they stay for such a long time would be able to see some perceptible time dilation effects over time so to say right so that concludes the problems uh, that we saw want to solve wanted to solve on um, Finn's paradox right so the last problem is not a direct uh, twins paradox uh, problem per se uh, but uh, you can see that uh, that also shows us the effect if I uh, suppose a twin is uh, staying on an international space station uh, kind of thing and other twin is left back on earth even after uh, hundreds of uh, years uh, uh, the twin who, who stayed on the space station wouldn't uh, you know have uh, much of an age difference with with his twin on uh, earth so that also kind of brings out the essence of twins paradox uh, on this problem interestingly and that's why i decided to work it out for you here that completes all the problems that we wanted to solve on twins paradox thank you for watching